Recently, state governors strong the presidential villa, and this time around, their mission was almost predictable. Your guess was just as good as mine, with state governors in perpetual clamor for bailouts. And alas, they came out of the meeting with the president, and the agenda wasn't far-fetched. Some Nigerians do not share this sentiment and are calling on state governors to cut cost of governance and find alternative ways of generating revenue. Is this cry for bailouts justifiable? What's the position of the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission, RMAFC, on this? Please join in this conversation. Send us your comments on our social media platforms. Another issue of contention is the public outcry over an alleged outrageous salary of lawmakers. As the RMAFC insists that nothing more than 800,000 Naira monthly is approved for the lawmakers. In order to put an end to these speculations, Channels TV goes head on where the chairman of the RMAFC, Dr. Shetima Umar Abagana, channels. Uh, the Revenue um, Mobilization Allocation Fiscal Commission um, has been given about five or six mandates by the Constitution. The 1999 Constitution has amended. Um, the first is to monitor accruals into the federation account and disbursements therefrom. Uh, the second is to, um, uh, to recommend a remuneration package for political, public, judicial, uh, legislative office holders for the federal states and the local governments recommend to the Mr. President who presents it to National Assembly for the federal and to the state assemblies uh, for the states uh, into passage into law for, for the enumeration and all the political office holders um, from the President down to councillors. Um, the third is a revenue formula that the Constitution said should be reviewed from time to time to bring it into conformity with um, uh, the changing realities uh, in the country. Um, the, and whatever revenue formula that is passed must be used for at least five years before a new one um, can be done. The federal government recently announced a marginal growth rate in the GDP, 0.55% GDP growth rate. And um, the National Bureau of Statistics is saying that Nigeria has exited recession. But looking at this statement now, uh, the reaction of the president gives, raises some, stimulates some school of thought when it said that he would only welcome this development if it translates to a positive impact on the standard of living of Nigerians. And only recently, the budget minister also said that Nigerians shouldn't expect any significant increase yet from this GDP. So how can we boost revenue? How can we boost the nation's revenue base to fast track this climb? Um, when you are in recession, it means uh, at least two quarters of a uh, 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 negative, uh, you know, of, of, of a fall in, in, in the economic activities of a, of a nation. When you now go out of recession, it means that you have a quarter or two of a positive growth, but you are now still climbing out of a valley, you are still climbing out of a recession. Uh, so before you climb out of that recession and go back to the way, you, where, uh, the, where you have, where the status quo where you were before the recession started, may take some time, uh, depending on how fast your recovery is. And therefore, before you now get back to that status quo, where you, before the recession started, uh, and before the, the, these benefits begin to trickle down to uh, the man on the street, they would definitely there will be a lag time, and that is what the, the, the difference between um, that's the explanation of what the minister said. Yes, we are getting out of recession. We need to go out of recession for some time before it, the benefits uh, gets to the man on the street. The Senate recently okayed a 1.86 billion dollar borrowing plan. Is this the way to go? Yes, Nigeria is. Uh, um, underborrowed really. We are really now going towards a level of where, where we have um, uh, a very good balance of borrowing. You must borrow to grow out of a recession. You must borrow to uh, reflect your economy. Uh, so long as what you borrowed is spent wisely and judiciously in infrastructure and in growth areas, 
then you have a, a higher economic level that will be able to repay that loan, uh, loan that you borrowed down the, down the road. With, with this approval of borrowing plan now, the country finds itself in an unending cycle of borrowing and a, an unpleasant trend. Is there an end in sight to this borrowing plan? There, there, there is a, there's an end in sight. Um, the end in sight, uh, uh, as I said, is you need to borrow to go out of recession. And the recession uh, uh, had, had, uh, goes back. Uh, the beginning of it goes back to when crude oil prices crashed. Uh, at one point, several years ago, it was $140 a barrel, came down to 110 stayed there for quite a long time, and then it went down to as low as $30, and it's now hovering between 50 55 And most of the time, in the last few uh, months, it was around $50 a barrel. Certainly, they, they, that would be a major impact on the Nigerian economy. Um, with the transparency and accountability that the government has now brought into place, uh, that definitely would mean that any borrowings coming in now and any revenue being generated now would be m more judiciously uh, utilized, which, which will down the road show a, a, a positive impact in, in the Nigerian economy in terms of growth, uh, uh, improvements of uh, people's lives. It, this takes us to the issue of fiscal discipline. Um, do we have a structure that would ensure fiscal discipline in terms of ensuring that the funds borrowed are channeled towards the right infrastructural demands of the nation? Well, yes. Uh, the current system where you, the current government has tried to bring uh, quite a lot of discipline into, into fiscal management. How? Uh, in, in the, uh, previously, uh, there were a lot more ministers appointed, now only 36. A uh, lot more other political appointees reduced. Uh, and um, there's, there's a limit and a cap to a lot of other things like traveling abroad. Uh, and recent news, uh, the president uh, himself, when he went to the United Nations, went with, with one of the fewest uh, um, uh, entourage in, in, in Africa. That he himself is now showing an example that uh, the large crowd of 600, 700 uh, people accompanying a president to the United Nations has now reduced to, I don't know, 10, 20, 30. It's a, it's a huge shift. So that's an example. If that uh, kind of um, example that is set goes around to virtually all levels of government, both at the federal and states and local governments, uh, re reducing political appointees. Uh, for example, uh, some states appointed, there's a state I know, appointed 1,500 special assistants to, to the, for the governor. I mean, to do what? Uh, if we reduce those political appointees, the funds so, reduce, so saved goes into infrastructure to serve the people. Then you now see um, an improved uh, uh, economy. Uh, um, discipline leads to savings, and savings leads to more resources going into capital.